This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm at the headquarters of Frank Warren. Um, finally uh, had a, a Queensbury show on this weekend, which is where we'll start, Frank, uh, on Friday night. We saw your man Chris Ball um, in a decision loss to, to Mark Leach. Just get your thoughts on it, please, Frank. I thought Mark, you know, he, he, I thought he won the fight. Uh, I thought Chris, um, he just I don't think he had enough experience. Um, he'd give a good account of himself and I'm sure he'll come again but I thought Mark done extremely well boxed extremely well and it was a good it was a nice win for him and as I say Chris could come back stronger I hope and uh, we'll get him out in the next few months again Yeah Chris with a, a brave performance but I think Carl Frampton alluded to it that it was Mark Leach's first proper camp that he's had and they were always thought he's a class operator Jamie, Nigel and Carl all always thought that so just maybe perhaps a little bit early for Chris you may be right you may be right you know but as I say you only had 10 fights going into that so you know it is what it is but as he's a young man he can come again and 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 and, and I, I thought I thought he won it well I thought he really did win it well and he really boxed well very intelligently but elsewhere on the card um, some good stoppage wins uh, for, your, for youngsters like sort of uh, Itoma and Frankham both done well, yeah. Both good performances from them. Um, I was very pleased with their performances. And of course, the uh, night after on Saturday, we saw a dramatic fight uh, between Leewood and, and Mick Conlon. I'm guessing you watched it, Frank? I did, yeah. Um, obviously, the main thing on the night um, for everyone who was there um, was that Mick Conlon was okay, and it's great to hear that the hospital gave him the, the all clear. So, of course, that was a, a big relief. But um, yeah, dominated the fight, really. A lot of people had Mick winning, but then Leewood uh, pulled out the bag last minute. Well, he did. He did what he had to do. You know, he came from behind. It's very dramatic, and 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 done the business in the last round. Uh, you know, I'm sure Mick can come again. I hope he can come again. And uh, he, he boxed. You know, he did box well, but uh, that was a that was a, a very dramatic and uh, and <laughs> and a very com very uh, convincing stoppage, wasn't it? Very yeah. much so. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, discuss this week, Frank. Obviously. Uh, Wembley Arena, you've got David Avenisian back in action. Now, we'll just uh, want to address, obviously, there's a whole political situation going on at the moment. We know uh, Avenisian has Russian roots. So, what's the situation with him um, fighting this Saturday night? Well, he's fighting. You know, he's, uh, he's, fights on, he's an Armenian whose family fled to Russia from the, the war in Azerbaijan. You know, it was in the, nine, in the uh, late 80s. Um, but he's licensed by a Serbian boxing authority. Um, as you've seen him when he comes into the ring, he's always got the, the Armenian flag around him and so forth. So he, he, will, he will box. And he's based over here, um, trains over here. He goes to, he's a Wigan, Wigan football supporter. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but he, he'll fight in the car. And just to let everybody know, we will do again as we did on Friday night. There will be, um, we will be, There'll be no blue, uh, no um, red corner. There'll be yellow, blue, and all the ring will be done up in in the Ukrainian <coughs> Ukrainian uh, national colours. What are your thoughts on politics at the moment, mixing with sport? I read a really interesting article by uh, Thomas Hauser, and you know you can understand in some ways with boxers, they um, I don't know they don't want to be. Well, sportsmen don't want to be caught up in politics. I mean, they stopped the uh, Russian uh, disabled team competing in, and the Belarusians competing in the Olympics. And, you know, people who have trained for four years for a, an event or if they're training for a fight or football, whatever it may be, you can understand it. But I think Thomas Hauser, what he, what he actually said is quite right. How do you, you know, so you may be stopping somebody playing, but in the meantime, there are people dying and families dying, can a country being raised to the ground? And so you have to, you know, you have to, you have to look at that side of it. And you know, unfortunately, what Putin do, is doing is is a great shame. I, mean, I was watching the news this morning with that young uh, news uh, go in the newsroom came in with a banner, and you were really brave thing to do. But and there are people in Russia, there's no doubt about it, who are against the war. Um, but he's a strong man there, and uh, at the moment, what he's doing is is inhuman. There's no, you know, what he's doing is just the most dreadful thing to a country. So I suppose you can't compare sport or people competing in sport with what is happening there. And if the stand's got to be made, then a stand has to be made. In terms of 
in the boxing sphere, obviously there are multiple high profile Russian fighters, none other than Dmitry Bivol, who's coming up against Canelo Alvarez soon. Do you think it's unfair if Russian fighters, individuals, are not allowed to box because of this situation? Well, I, I think anybody who's, who's, who's uh, watching this, read Thomas Hauser's piece and then make your decision. Make a decision to what you feel about it. I think, you know, what he says is really compulsive. Very, very compulsive. What, you know, or, or what he is, you know, the way he set it out. And it's... it's Something's got to happen. Someone's got to draw the attention to what this man's doing in Russia, what Putin's doing, and what he's doing in Russia is he's destroying Russian, you know, Russia abroad. You know, Russia is now seen as a pariah state, and that's it. That's the bottom line of it. That's what he's doing. He's he's ruining everything that is that any any good of any good of Russia. He is absolutely destroying it. All the credibility, the sportsmen, anything that's good. He's, he's, he's ruining it. He's ru ruining, ruining lives. He's, he's murdering people. His forces are in there. They shouldn't be in there. You know, you'd think after the Second World War, you know, people would learn from this. I mean, it's just dread. It's, it's too dreadful for words. Could you imagine that once, like us sitting here one day, and then the next day you've got bombs raining down on you? Because that's what happened. These people are going about their lives normally, and then the next minute, you know, their, their homes are being blown up. They've got enough, all their possessions are gone. You know they're, they're they're trying to find safety. They're living you know in the basement of the building or going for going to other countries for as refugees and looking for asylum. This it, you know, this is mad, it's madness. And this man is has to be stopped. There's no doubt about it. I have to stop him. Okay, uh, moving on on to the heavyweight division. I'm not going to start with uh, Tyson Fury and Dillian White. I'm going to start with Anthony Joshua and Joe Joyce. Uh, of course, this conversation that you started um, from. The interview we did last week um, in this office, and then yeah, since that week, um, all I've heard is people talking about Anthony Joshua and Joe Joyce. Obviously, Anthony Joshua needs an opponent because of this situation in Ukraine uh, with Russia. But um, I want to read some of Carl Frosch's comments on this situation. So he said that Joshua won't be knocking Joyce out and around. I don't think anyone can knock him out full stop. That's the fight we should be pushing for, and I'm sure he'd go along with Carl Froch on that. Me and Carl always agree, you know that. <laughs> it's right, it's, listen, it's a good fight. Everybody, in, look, at the end of the day, you push, you push every, all, the, all the bullshit aside, all the politics in sport aside, and it's a good fight. Of course it's a good fight. Joe wants it, I know that. I don't know if AJ wants it, but certainly Joe wants it. And why wouldn't he want that fight? It's a, it's a great opportunity for him. Well, Joshua took to social media where people were suggesting that he might avoid Joe Joyce and he kind of responded in a manner where you think I'll avoid Joe Joyce with like rolling eyes, essentially saying I'll knock up Joe Joyce. So is there any reason bar the TV network situation and promotional situation why that fight can't happen next, Frank? Well, I don't know what his promotional situation is. I mean, I don't know if he's still fighting on the app or he's going, you know, or he's going to Sky. I don't know what he's doing. But you know, if he's if you know these fights are easy, they're not difficult to make. The personalities make it difficult to make. If you really want the fight, if Joe, if 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 AJ really wants to fight Joe, then get around the table and you and you and you and you work it out. Why wouldn't you work it out? It's, it's, you know, it's, it's there to be done. Well, promotionally, we know if he wants it. <laughs> promotionally, we know he's uh, with Matram, but his TV deal was separate. He's out of contract at the moment. Uh, TV wise, I spoke to Adam Smith funnily enough yesterday, and he believes he will renew with Sky Sports box office. So it why is he not fighting on the app then? Well, that's up to, to Joshua and his team. But um, I think from what Adam Smith and Sky are saying, they believe it's not fact yet, but they believe he will renew with Sky. Um, so, what what's the the main thing that's going to hold this fight up? Nothing. Put it on both channels. Okay. Eddie Earnest, promoter, did say that he believes uh, yourself and Joe Joyce will outprice yourself on this. Put up the purse, let's see who wins it. <laughs> but could, could you see that you'd have to be realistic in this situation where Joshua is obviously the bigger draw in this scenario? Well, he is. I, I, you know, I'm not going to say he isn't. Be. Going, in, you know, going into his previous fight, he was the bigger draw, but let's, you know, his, his credibility, his stock has gone down on his... You know, in the last couple of years, he's had a couple of performances where he's he's looked more than average, just about average. Certainly, his last one. 
and his stock's gone down. So, you know, for me, go, you know, try and do something together or put it up or, or work a deal out where we, where we, where, you know, whoever puts in the highest bid puts it on. We'll get behind that man like we always do. Can you think of anyone in, in world boxing right now that would be better for Joshua? Obviously no. Fury and White are tied up. No, no. I can't think of anyone in, in boxing at the moment would be better for Joe than AJ. I fancy the fight for him. I, fa I fancy Joe to be. Be a good dynamic as well because you got an all British clash with Fury and Correct. White. And you'd have Correct. one of Joshua and Joyce right. winners fight each other. Absolutely right. And at the end of the day, let's get it right, you know, AJ makes his own decisions. If he's, as you just saying, Adam Smith saying he signed with Sky, that couldn't have gone down too well at the zone. So he's obviously making his own decisions. Yeah. Uh, why does, in your opinion, Joe Joyce beat Anthony Joshua? I think he's got a good chin. I think he's strong. And I think that AJ's been exposed, not once, on a couple of occasions exposed. And I think somebody's got a good chin, that takes away what, what he's really, the thing he's got going for him, which is his punch. Joe's got a good jab. And I think he will wear him down and I think he'll knock him out. Just out of interest, in this situation where Anthony Joshua's got a rematch clause uh, with Alexander Usyk that's contractually done, yeah. um, say obviously Usyk, as I said, has got far more bigger worries at the moment, but if he's in a position by the end of the year to fight again, if Joe Joyce or anyone for that matter were to be Anthony Joshua, Anthony Joshua, am I right in saying, still gets that shot at Alexander Usyk? I don't know, it depends what Usyk says. And it depends if the governing bodies allow it more than anything. Because, I mean, for example, if he was to whoever he fights, so he gets beat, or gets knocked out, I don't think the governing bodies will let him, uh, coming off of two losses, will let him fight for the world title. I don't believe so. Okay. All right. Let's move on to uh, Tyson Fury and Dillian White. Last time I spoke to you, coach packages were still on sale. Have we got an update on that? They're bit? gone. All of them? Yeah, they went in about, I think, about an hour. So what are we at now, 90,000? Yeah, and we're waiting today for, um, it's a record gate by the way. It's a record gate for Wembley, not just boxing, in any event. Any event that's something gone on there, it's a record gate. We just wait, I think it's just a couple of, I think it's a hundred or so platinum tickets left with, um, with uh, Ticketmaster. And we're just waiting for them to come back regarding letting us, uh, you know, we've applied for a few more seats and see if we can get seeing if they'll let us do that. So we're waiting for them to come back to us on that. So you've applied for 100,000, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. In terms of the, those platinum tickets, um, whose decision is that to make them plat platinum? Is that Ticketmaster? Yeah. Okay, do you have to approve that or not? Do I have to prove it? No, appro approve that. They bought the gate off us. Right, okay. So they control the they ticket? They control the ticket. Okay. Do you believe um, Wembley will approve that extension to 100,000? It's not up to Wembley, it's up to the local authorities. Wembley would oh. love it. It's up to local authorities. Is there any reason why they wouldn't? I don't know. It, 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 I think you know, it's all about you know foot traffic and, and and so forth. How many people can get in the entrances at certain times? Remember, it's not like a normal event. We're using the pitch. Mind you, they do that in, in music events as well. Mm. So I'm I'm hoping that they 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 uh, they'll go with it. Mm. But uh, on general, even even if it doesn't, we hope it goes to hundred thousand. But even with ninety thousand, must be it's a record already. Yeah, it's a record already. Shows the magnitude of the yeah, event. Genuine seller, yeah. yeah. Still confident uh, 1.5 million pay-per-view buyers? Yeah, I think by the response that we've had. I mean, you've got, I think it's, um, you, you, I was interview you've done about coach parties saying that they'd, I think when you've done something with uh, Matchroom about them, they said they don't sell and they're very difficult to sell and so forth. Well, the fact is they all went like that. So you've got to look and think to yourself, you know, the demand for this fight means that the pay-per-view is going to be Tremendous, that's how I look at it. I mean, if you know, the way the tickets have been snapped at, you know, that translates, translates into big PPV figures. Frank, it's mad to think, yeah, we're just talking about 90,000 tickets and potentially 100,000 tickets at, at Wembley, 1.5 million pay per view buyers. You know, when you signed Tyson Fury, um, a lot of people didn't even think he'd fight for a world title again, uh, let alone breaking records and beating Wilder numerous times and then defending his title against Dillian White has just been a, an epic journey. It has, he's done brilliantly. I mean, you know, it's a, you know he's, he's really done well and we've done well working with him and, and, and also, you know, he's just, he's just he's, he's the most recognisable sportsman in this country, there's no doubt about it. 
no doubt. That. And, and I'm really well known around the world and certainly in the States now. Yeah, in the States, I mean, I think I speak to a lot of boxing fans out there when I go over to fights and Canelo and him are kind of the two main stars yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, Golden Boy had done a brilliant job with Canelo, and Canelo's, you know, he's got that great Hispanic market there, which is a big boxing market, and obviously he's, he's built up a following over the years um, through the, you know, the great promotion and the fights that we was involved in. He's, I mean, he's a big, big name, Canelo. Funny, we did Canelo's fight on Box Nation, if you remember, when he fought uh, um, uh, Triple G. We brought them both over. That was on Box Nation. Canelo Khan was on Box Nation as well, wasn't it? It was, yeah. 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 We, sp we, we, we spotted him. <laughs> In terms of uh, Tyson Fury, though, overall, to the point where you first got your signature to where he is now, how has that gone for you? I can't complain. I mean, you know, how can I complain? It's, it's brilliant. You know, it, 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 it's, it's really gone well. It's gone really well. And, I, you know, and for anybody to say any different, it'd be it's crazy. <laughs> listen, listen. If he was chocolate, he'd eat himself, wouldn't he? He just can't stop. He just can't stop. He had an opportunity to sign Tyson. We were both talking to him. Was it four years ago? Four and a half years. And Tyson came back with us. He wanted to bring Tyson back and put him straight on pay per view. We brought him back and we built him again. We re, you know, re rebuilt his profile. We put him on BT. They had the highest ever numbers of watching any sport outside of the Premiership on BT, huge record numbers um, and then within a couple of fights we got him a world title fight against Wilder again it was uh, you know, big big viewing figures it was what you know, built his name in the States done the record deal with uh, ESPN and top rank for his fights in the States he had a couple of warm ups, two great fights rematches with Wilder, I mean brilliant fights fight, I mean, uh, you know, fights you'll never forget as you just said, brought him back to the UK now. Record sellout. It's the highest grossing event in Wembley's history of any event. I mean, that tells you all you know. And uh, and that's called good promotion. That's what we did. I let, could anybody have done it better? I don't know. I mean, simultaneously, Dillian White's been sitting around for 1,200 days uh, waiting, for a, waiting for a promoter who he was with to get him a, a shot. What's he done with him? We've done it very quickly with him with uh, Tyson, Dillian now, thanks to us, he's now getting uh, his shot at the title and he's getting a record purse, thanks to us. That's called promotion. Moving on in the heavyweight division, uh, Daniel Dubois and Trevor Bryant, we expected purse bids last night, where were we with that? We were told on Sunday, late Sunday, that uh, they were pushing the purse bids back a week because of an objection from Trevor Bryant's team, which is Don King. I don't know what it's about, and they pushed the bids back till next next Monday, so we will res whatever it is. We're pissed off, and certainly Daniel is. But we'll uh, we we have written to them and told them what we expect. Uh, they they put out that purse bid and they sent it to all their licensed promoters who deal with the WBA, and we expect them to um, carry that through, carry it out what what the terms were, and adhere to that by next Monday. If they don't, then we will be issuing proceedings against them. So, so sorry, just to know, what's happened with Don King? They've just asked, they've objected to the purse bid. That, that's the explanation that we got. That's it, just one line that they've objected to the purse bid. That sounds very bizarre to me. It sounds bizarre to me, it sounds bizarre to everybody. You know, their heavyweight division just seems to, it's been stagnating for God knows how long. We're trying to get it moving. And, and you know, it's not fair on Daniel. He's been sitting around, he's fit and able to box. And uh, as I say, we, we will not accept anything less than the purse bid on Monday. We don't want to be negotiating with anybody. Negotiations are done. Just get on with the purse bid. Okay. We'll get an update on that hopefully next week. Just uh, matters outside of Queensbury, quickly, please, Frank. Um, we heard that reportedly Carnbrook did over 500,000 pay per view buys on Sky Sports Box Office. So would you say that's a, a success overall? Yeah, I heard it's a little bit less than that. But, you know, whatever it did, it did. And. Uh, and good luck to him. Heard yesterday from uh, Ben Shalom and Adam Smith that they've been informed from Amir Khan that he wants to actually carry on fighting. Who are your thoughts on that? He should retire. Okay, well that's, that's that he one there. Do. I mean, you watched the fight. Do you think he should carry on fighting? 
I'm not going to say that. Look at his camera, age. Gosh. You look at his age. You look at what he's done, and you look at that fight. You should stop fighting. He's, he's, he, as you say, Dave, if if that number is true, what they're declaring, then he's he's had a good day at the races. He's got himself a few quid and, and go and enjoy it. Doesn't need to fight and get hurt anymore. You know, he's passed his best. Both passed their best. Yeah. I think we all knew that going into the fight. You know, we, all, we I just felt that Amir legs. He would have more have some legs left, but he hasn't. Can't get out of the way. Spoke to you about uh, Taylor Cattrall quite a few times, but since we last spoke about it, we've heard that the police are investigating this division, decision, whatever Stupid. that means. Uh, it's the, 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 the new Speaker of the House, Lindsay, I can't think of his surname, has made a complaint. He's also the MP for Jack's area, and I get where he's coming from, or his constituency. I get, I understand what he's coming, where he's coming from, that it was a bad decision, and obviously the board have felt that. They've downgraded in John Lewis. So they, are, they, you know, they, they, they obviously believe it was a bad decision. Um, but the bottom line of it is, it wasn't corrupt. You know, there's, there's, for want of a better, I'm not going to use the word incompetent, although I am using it, I suppose. You know, there's, 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 there's bad judging, and there's corruption. There was no corruption. No, there's no sort of anyone getting, getting backhanders or anything. That's just rubbish. And to get the police involved in it, I think is, uh, is ridiculous. Who are they going to arrest? Well, if somebody was corrupt, they'd arrest somebody who's corrupt. But there isn't anybody corrupt. It was, it was just, you know, it's just bad, bad, bad judging. And that, that's what it was. Now, this situation with Taylor Cattrall actually affects uh, yourself and, and Francis, your son, who manages uh, Heremise Ponce. Yeah. Um, he's got a great position with the IBF. Now, the board, the British board, I mean, wrote to the governing body, saying Jack Cattrall. Um, should be in a position to fight for the titles. Um, now, of course, that decision that was made about Taylor winning the fight had nothing to do with the governing bodies. Um, it was a British board decision and their, their staff. Well, they insisted the board of control on using, I know it's a WBO title, a WBO um, chance, a term for you know, the, at the four governing bodies and they insisted that they use all British officials. So that's down to them. As for the governing bodies, they'll, I mean, they'll obviously decide to do what, they, they, what they're going to do. Um, I don't think uh, anybody's going to influence them on, on where they're going on it. They'll make their decisions. I mean, Jack deser certainly deserves, deserves another chance. He will never get another chance to fight the same weight, that's for sure, by the sounds of it. I think uh, um, Josh has made it quite clear he's going up in weight. But only he knows that. But if he goes up in weight, then 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 that fights out the window, isn't it, for those four titles? Mm. And if he's going up in weight, that means those four belts are going to be vacant, and it's going to be up to the governing bodies where they see where where Jack fits in in that picture. Yeah, absolutely. I think as fans, Jack definitely deserves uh, another shot. Just on paper, though, of course, on paper it says Taylor beat Catrell, and you've got fight punts. You've got several challenges of different government months. bodies. If he vacates the IBF title, then why don't that get the WBA to make that and, 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 and Francis, man? That's a good fight. The British public know he is. They've seen him over here, haven't they? Yeah, beat Ritson here. Yeah, so that'd be a good fight to make. That'd be a great fight for Jack. All right, and just to close off, uh, yeah, recently we saw um, Wasserman um, announce a deal with Channel 5. Um, feels like every week there's a new TV deal going on. Uh, with another promotion boxing, but that's that's good for the sport, isn't it? Well, it is. The more eyeballs that watch boxing, the better. You know, I've always said that, and uh, they've got a deal. I think they've done a 12-month deal with them, and uh, and I think they've got five or six fights over that period of time. It's great. You know, it's great for boxing. You know, it's in this, and they're a terrestrial channel, and they, uh, you know, you you got to say with Channel Five, they they really do try. They try hard. They're trying very hard, and they're you know the people who work there. Uh, you know, I think a massive boxing fan, so good luck to them. We know one of those shows uh, is highly likely to be a main event where your guy Denzel Bentley yeah. goes in against Linus Sadofia, so of course you're back in. Well, they're kicking off with a good fight, aren't they? <laughs> they know that. That's not bad, good for them. You're, of course, back in uh, Denzel to get the win. Yeah, right? yeah, I hope so. I believe so. Listen, Frank, thank you very much for your time. Of course, uh, tune into BT Sport uh, this Saturday. You've got Dennis McCann, Hamza Shiraz. Sam Noakes, I believe, and a lot of other prospects on, um, and of course David Avenisi in headlining, so tune into BT Sport. Sounds good to me.